Hello everyone and welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. In this video we are going to talk about the question of whether hair straighteners cause cancer in black women because they suffer the consequences of cancer-causing chemicals in hair straightening products more than any other group. In the United States alone, black consumers spend approximately $473 million on hair care products annually. Black women spend nine times more on ethnic hair products than non-black consumers of both genders. Unfortunately, products designed for and marketed to black women contain the highest levels of toxic and harmful ingredients. So let's talk about it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel, like, comment and share the video, it's free. Just 10 years ago, 80% of black beauty supply store shelves were stocked with products for chemically straightened hair, while 20% of products were made for the naturals among us. According to Forbes, the opposite is true today. And as more so-called black women make the transition from relaxed to natural hair, that figure becomes slimmer and slimmer. So what's driving this change, and could it ultimately lead to the demise and death of the perm era? Well, that depends on us sisters. I started getting relaxers in grade school and spent the next 30 years getting the treatment routinely. For those of us who have ever subscribed to the system, you know how it goes. Every four to eight weeks, you feel the outgrowth of the chemicals and the new growth from your roots indicating that it's time for another trip to the salon. The white, creamy mix is applied and you let it sit long enough for it to tingle just a little bit before rinsing it out, hoping there are no scalp burns left behind. For one lady, however, a television journalist who felt the pressure to conform to the European beauty standards of having long, straight hair for years, the routine was growing old and much too risky. A lot of women say that they will not return to chemical relaxers. I can't imagine what my mother went through in her time and feeling even more pressure than to adapt to status quo or societal acceptability. But now that I understand that the Most High, the creator of the heavens and the earth gave us sisters the best hair on earth, I wear my crown and I won't return to damaging chemicals. While market research firm Klein & Co. reports that sales from chemical straightening products have been on the decline for at least a decade for a multitude of reasons, a recent study conducted by the National Institutes of Health has assessed that women who have used hair straightening chemicals or relaxers may be at higher risk of developing uterine cancer. They estimated that 1.64% of women who never used hair straightener would go on to develop uterine cancer by the age of 70. But for frequent users, that risk goes up to 4.05%, said lead author Alexandra White, the head of the Environment and Cancer Epidemiology Group. The owner of Freedom Curls Salon in Indianapolis, Lakita Burnett, tells Forbes that she stopped offering relaxer services in 2013 after quitting her job at a J.C. Penney salon location. She mentions that many of her former clients were lawyers and nurses who felt the need to be in accordance with a professional aesthetic that never Never considered black hair textures. Every six to eight weeks, they would be back in her chair like clockwork. That's why they called it the creamy crack, Burnett said. It's addictive, you can't stop doing it, and you have to keep doing it so that your hair can stay straight. But Burnett says she also witnessed a sharp decline in women seeking the service as salons closed during the pandemic and many were forced to go natural. For Alnissa Hanks, however, owner of Glamorous Styles Salon in Union, New Jersey, she says that while it's true that fewer of her customers are getting relaxers these days, she doesn't ever see the service departing entirely. Relaxers will be here, said Hanks. I can't see them going anywhere, not unless they just decide altogether it's linked to cancer and pull them all off the shelves. Almost every black woman I know has had her hair relaxed at some point in her life. That's not an exaggeration. From friends and family to co-workers and acquaintances, almost all of them have had personal experiences with hair relaxer, a cream that straightens our natural curls. Growing up, relaxer kits were a staple in black homes and hair salons. As a young girl, I couldn't wait until I was old enough to sit in the chair and have the foul-smelling cream slathered onto my head, just like my mother, sisters, aunts, and cousins had always done. So in July 2021, when Oxford University published a study linking hair relaxers containing lie to a 30% increased risk of breast cancer, I was taken aback. I thought about all the women I know and love, some who have been relaxing their hair for decades, and what happened to them, and will the companies selling us these products ever be held accountable? My mother died of uterine cancer a few years ago, and she was still relaxing her hair at the time. I would like to think that if she had known about the harmful chemicals in the perms were linked to cancer, that she would have stopped using those products. The study's authors concluded that there was evidence that the heavy use of lye containing hair relaxers may be associated with increased risk of estrogen receptor breast cancer. 
Certain toxic materials, including lye, formaldehyde, and phthalates such as DEHP have been used in hair relaxers for decades. These dangerous chemicals have been known to be endocrine disruptors, chemicals that may mimic or interfere with the body's hormones. They are linked to numerous immune problems, reproductive, brain, and developmental problems. They added that more research was needed in this area. Estrogen receptor breast cancer is a specific kind of cancer which is sensitive to estrogen, a naturally occurring hormone in women's bodies. Also referred to as endocrine-disrupting compounds, endocrine-disrupting chemicals, or hormonally active agents, endocrine disruptors are chemicals that can interfere with endocrine or hormonal system. They interfere with the action, binding, transport, secretion, synthesis, or elimination of natural hormones in the body that are responsible for fertility, behavior, development, and maintenance of homeostasis normal cell metabolism. Endocrine disruptors can cause cancerous tumors, birth defects, and other developmental disorders. Lye, also known as sodium hydroxide, is a heavy-duty chemical used to unblock drains. It is also used in hair relaxers and other hair products produced by big brands which are aimed at so-called black women. They are even sometimes marketed at children and available right here in the States and other countries. Household names selling products, which contain lye, include L'Oreal and Rivlon. The latest study out of Oxford is the latest in a long line of examples which suggest the beauty industry's feeling towards black women's health. Study after study has shown that products marketed towards black women, including hair relaxers, shampoos, dyes and lightening creams, are linked to long-term health concerns, including fertility issues, uterine cancer, breast cancer, uterine fibroids, or endometriosis and asthma, among others. L'Oreal is no stranger to consumer lawsuits. Several cases have been unsuccessfully brought against them in the United States by women who have gone bald, suffered scalp burns, and hair loss. Toxic chemicals and beauty products are often buried in the catch all ingredient fragrance. The law does not require chemicals and fragrances to be identified separately. This has allowed major manufacturers to sell products containing dangerous chemicals without disclosing the materials or the risks involved. These companies should be held accountable for their actions. Black women lead the world in hysterectomies. More than 200,000 procedures are performed every year. Of hysterectomies performed on black women, the vast majority are due to fibroids. Black women are diagnosed with fibroids approximately three times more than white women. Black women also develop fibroids earlier in life and usually experience larger and more numerous fibroids that lead to more severe symptoms. One of my sisters had fibroids, and she had surgery to have them removed. Beyond the research, black women have been publicly speaking about these experiences for decades, but no one seems to be listening. What will it take for us to be heard? I can't help but wonder how quickly these products would have been removed and reformulated if so-called white women were the ones at risk. There is a hashtag called No More Lies, a campaign demanding that L'Oreal and Revlon publicly commit to removing lies and associated hydroxides from their products. If they cannot commit to this, they must take those products off the shelves. As for me, I no longer buy any type of products made by L'Oreal or Revlon. It is up to us as so-called black women to reject these brands. We have to look out for ourselves because they have shown us countless times that they don't care. So, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, leave a like and a comment. And if it is your first time on the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time.